Pertussis, also known as whooping cough, is a highly contagious bacterial disease that can lead to death in infants. So prevention is of primary importance. We spoke with Dr. Felice Adler at Children's Hospital of Orange County to discuss this preventable disease. So whooping cough is a contagious illness caused by the germ or bacteria Bordetella pertussis. The germ can cause uncontrollable fits of coughing, and when a person gasps for air after their coughing spell, they may make a whoop sound, which is why the disease has its common name of whooping cough. Pertussis is the only infectious disease for which we routinely vaccinate children in the United States, which is on the rise. Dr. Adler talks about the symptoms and complications from whooping cough. The initial symptoms of whooping cough or pertussis happen about seven to 10 days after the person has been exposed to the infection. The initial symptoms you may see are similar to the symptoms of the common cold. So you may see um, runny nose, cough, low-grade fever, sneezing, and it can be very difficult to distinguish whooping cough from the common cold at that point. Those symptoms may last one to two weeks. And after that, the coughing spells begin with the violent, uncontrollable coughing. These symptoms can last for weeks to months. When the young infants get pertussis or whooping cough, they can have such severe fits of coughing that they can't eat, drink, or breathe. Adults and infants may have symptoms of vomiting after the severe cough as well. Over 50% of infants under one year of age with pertussis will require hospitalization. And those infants who are hospitalized can have complications like pneumonia. They may have seizures or convulsions. They can develop apnea where they stop breathing. Some infants can end up with brain damage. And death is a real possibility for young infants who develop the pertussis infection. In teens and adults, the uh, main complications are due to the severity of the fits of coughing. So they can pass out or faint from the severe coughing spells, or they may fracture a rib. Dr. Adler told us how pertussis is treated. Pertussis is treated with antibiotics, but antibiotics have to be given very early in the course of infection for them to be effective. Later on in infection, once you've already developed the coughing spells, uh, antibiotics will not help prevent or lessen the severity of the infection, but they're still given to help prevent the spread of infection to those around you. We know that in a household where someone's infected with pertussis, up to 100% of susceptible people in that household will catch pertussis from the one infected person. We know that in infant pertussis, most cases are contracted from a family member living in the home, and the majority of the time that family member is one of the infant's parents, which is why it's so important for parents to be vaccinated against whooping cough or pertussis. What's the best way to prevent whooping cough or pertussis? The best way to prevent pertussis is through immunization. We recommend that every infant, child, teen, and adult be vaccinated against pertussis. Infants get the vaccine at two, four, and six months, again, somewhere between 15 and 18 months, and then a booster dose between four and six years before they start school. Now we also vaccinate all preteens when they're about 11 to 12 years old with a booster vaccine called Tdap, which provides similar protection. The Tdap vaccine is also recommended as a single dose for all adults. This is especially important for new parents, grandparents, babysitters, and even pregnant women who've not been previously vaccinated can be vaccinated with a Tdap vaccine to protect their as yet unborn child.